Today, he shares his photographs and the stories of the largest abandoned subway in the United States. Please join me in. Over to Ray. introduction, I, that's pretty good. Some of it's true. <laughs> he said, a tenacious researcher. I think that means I'm a bullheaded Dutchman. <laughs> and there's a few people in this room that know me for a while, and I didn't hear anybody complain or argue about it, so it must be true. We are, we are here to talk about the abandoned subway. And hey, who knows it's Elvis's birthday today. Yeah, see, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Some friend of mine told me that. I don't celebrate heavenly birthdays, but these guys do. So, it reminded me of his last charted song when he was alive. Way, way down is the name of the song. Way, way down. Get it? Way, way down. Get it? We got it. Look, it's going to be full of jokes just like that. Can we leave now? Yeah, you can leave now. Hurry up. I want to get you good. All right. What you're looking at is a, is a, uh, a slide from, a, from the 1835 graphic. It's a newspaper here in Cincinnati. 18, 1895, they said, we need to put a subway here. We need to be just like Boston. We need to be just like New York. We need to put in a subway. So if you look up here, you see underground, people coming down the steps, a whole bunch of buildings that were never in Cincinnati. But that's their idea of what, it's, what it should look like. So they were pushing it. Our city leaders listened to him and said, yeah, we'll think about it. They started looking around and said, where are we going to put that thing? What you see now, believe it or not, the Miami and Erie Canal came from <clears throat> Lake Erie and came all the way down to the Ohio River. So this image, there's Music Hall. Still there. This was the city hospital. This building with the water tower on top still stands. And just to the other side of that building, they got some new facility there, <laughs> some kind of sporting thing. <laughs> just, a, just a little small thing. So our city leaders said, well, look, we got something to stand in the way. We don't use it anymore. We'll think about it. So around 1912, 1895 to 1912, they started looking into it. Kind of reminds you of the banks, doesn't it? Yeah, we'll work on that. So they start thinking about it. Could we do this? And that's like 1912. So these are different shots of different parts of the canal. While it still had water in it. Kids playing in the canal. Wow. Bridges. I'll tell you this right here, just as a side note, these bridges here. Many of you people know. Let me ask you this. How many people have actually ever been in the, in the subway? Yeah. People who are not Waterworks employees. How many people? Yeah. <laughs> oh, now we're down to three. Yeah. <laughs> I go. Uh, yeah, so, so you're going to be excited to see some of this stuff then. So, but... For those of you who, who like Cincinnati history, these bridges here, you see one here, you see another one here, and one way back in there like that. This is along the east-west where the, the canal went. And on the other side of that canal up in here, and this is the YMCA building that is still there, that's where all the Germans lived. Right, Don? That's where most of the Germans lived. There you are. And this is a waterway. 
And so the Germans on the other side said, oh, that reminds us of back home. The Rhine River. In order to get there, you had to go over the Rhine. That's what all those bridges were. in the water, bridges to take you over, over the Rhine, right? This is moving up towards Mohawk, right area. So, lots of images of this, what used to be a canal. So the city leaders talked about it some more. And they said, well, maybe we could. Maybe we could put a subway but well, we wouldn't be able to put a subway everywhere. So they decided, we'll put a subway. So this red line that you see, green turns to blue, turns to red, and goes down the Ohio. This is where the canal was. And so they said, well, we'll, we'll where it was in town, we'll put it underground. And then we'll go up through Brighton. And we'll go up through Camp Washington. And we'll go up through Wint Terrace. And we'll go up through Avondale and Bond Hill. And we'll come around Norwood. And we'll go to Oakley. And then we'll come back around. That was the plan in 1912. But again, we're talking about the government. In February of 1920, they put the first shovel in the ground. Start digging. That's their first shovel. This building is still there as well. Many of us at our age recall that as the Ohio College of Applied Sciences on Ocus on the Central Parkway. The building's still there. So that's where they started digging. Lots and lots of pictures of them digging. There's the music hall again. There's the uh, building with the water tower. They've taken down the uh, city hospital by then. Um, some of the digs didn't go as smoothly as they had hoped. Uh, Larry, there was no oops then, so they couldn't call the Ohio Utility Protection Service and say, tell me what's underground before we start digging. They just stick a steam shovel in there and, oh my, whatever they hit, they hit, they had to repair. And that, we won't get into that, but that really was a major problem when they, did, when they built this thing, is when they got too close to the houses, Houses started falling down because they're they're undermining it. They're digging underground. So uh, there are there are a hundred houses. That might be too many. At least fifty houses in Brighton that they had to buy and tear down because they're undermining. It. That's a good example of when you dig a twenty foot hole in the ground. Just more pictures of it. The surveyor there. Another crane. There's Ocus again. What did you do with all the dirt? I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of dirt there. A lot of time. I know when they did Union Terminal, they had to build up, and that came from Price Hill. But what they do with all this dirt, I really don't know. Oh, now I got to go back to work. Huh? <laughs> 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 So what you see here is they're starting to they're starting to put down some steel. This these couple pictures of all the steel that they're putting in, this is why that thing is still standing. It's because all the steel they put into it. Now, they let me backtrack just a second to tell you that they finally got bonds approved for the whopping sum of six million dollars. <coughs> They're going to dig a two-mile-long hole in the ground and then take a 20-mile loop with overpasses and bridges and above-ground stations, and they're going to do it all for $6 million. So this steel is what really is the reason the thing is still standing, in my opinion. You see here, they had shoring back then. Tim, they had shoring. We didn't have shoring, did we? 
So they have shoring to keep it from falling in when the guys are down here working. Now they got steel up top, and here is the concrete mixer. Oh, yeah. And they're just running on a trough and pouring it right at the top. But all that steel, but all that concrete, in my opinion, is the reason that it's still standing. So now they start building. They dig that big hole. I hope the folks in the back can hear. Yeah. We're okay? Yes. You're lucky you don't have to see. <laughs> These guys up here are doing this. Richard Jones is doing this. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let the building begin. See, so they dig this gigantic hole. And this is right at, right where Central Parkway goes east-west. So we're coming west and then we're going up behind Music Hall now. This is right at what we call the turn. This building's still there, too. It was a French Bauer Dairy oh, yeah. building. Now it's been recovered, and I don't know what's in there now, but it's a black building now, dark gray. But that's right at the corner. So you see, they're building, and there's <coughs> two tunnels. Because you got to have inbound and outbound. Two tunnels. You see all the, all the framing that they got to put up with it. All the framing. Uh, you can hold your question to the end. <laughs> yes, sir. Just how old were you when you took these things? <laughs> <laughs> if I was Irish, I'd say, I'm just a wee lad. <laughs> it wasn't digital then. Oh, yeah. It was film then. Yeah, film. It was film then. Right. So these photographs, the black and white photographs that you see were taken by, they hired a photographer to take step-by-step -step pictures. Yeah. It started in 1920, and they were still taking photographs in 1928 to mark every move they made. Now, there were multiple contractors involved, so I'm sure some of it was to prove that they did the work. But well, we're so grateful that the, the, the Digital Library at the University of Cincinnati is the repository for these photographs, and we're allowed to use them. <laughs> So again, they're building these tunnels. This has got, already got the concrete poured on it, but they're still holding it back. All this is still underground, and you're going to see it shortly if I quit talking. Again, big tunnels. They got these, these are little recesses that go back in it, and they, they, some of them are windows, so you can jump between the two if necessary, if the train's coming. This is one of the best pictures that they have up there. This is in Brighton. This is where Central Parkway goes up on its way to, I still call it Quarter Tech, CTC, Cincinnati State, whatever it is now. So this is Central, Central, Central Vocational, that's right. So this is Brighton. Brighton was one of the stations they were building. They, they, they built three stations, and we'll see all of them here tonight. And this is one of them. This was the most northern underground station that they're building. So there's a lot more going on here. This is an old brewery that's up on McMicken. That building is still there. Um, this building that says helmet on it is there. Most of the rest of these are gone. So this is bright. It's a wonderful picture that shows a whole bunch of government workers standing around. Can <laughs> <laughs> I say that? Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Here's a close up of one of the tubes after the concrete's been poured. Again, we're in Brighton. There's the Brighton Bank. There's that, that, um, that brewery building. And this building here is the only one still standing all the way on. Bell House Sporting Goods was right. So, uh, so this is the tube, a tunnel, the tube, completely built, ready to be covered with dirt. Now we move up north, and we're past Music Hall, so the river's over there, and we're moving up again. Another supervisor, <laughs> right there, Tim Hess, Frank Rohde, one of them guys, <laughs> watching, <laughs> watching, uh, half of those guys are here. Not <laughs> You can see how much work. And again, they did it in, there was five different sections, so there were five different contractors. They all had to follow the same rules. 
but you'll see there's a little there's some differences in them back and forth. I hope it's not getting monotonous. It's just fascinating how they did all this with a steam shovel and a whole bunch of guys making a quarter an hour. You know, it's just amazing. And the thing is still standing. Just completely covered with concrete. So now we're moving. We're moving way north now. And you can see some of the daylight. But these are the interior walls. Which other than a whole bunch of graffiti on them, they look exactly the same. You're going to get tired of hearing it. It's amazing to me. It's a really cool thing. You've all seen this. So there, it's a set. There's two sets. They are just, if you're brave enough to go stand on the Western Hill of Vida and look north, yep. you'd see them both, both sets. One is right underneath of you, and the other one, if you look 100 feet away, 200 feet away, you'll see it. Those things are still there. Just recently, they redid the doors on them. You can see that there is no door there. Right. Uh, there was supposed to be, but <clears throat> vandals have a way of, oh, yeah. they needed more than city does so they take them so this door this is the north portal the south portal is the one that we use all the time uh, for maintaining In, inside there there's a water main a 48 inch water main mostly of concrete now being some ductile iron and there's a fiber optic cable hanging from the ceiling there's nothing else in there there are no rats because there is no food there are no dead bodies, of which we're aware. Um, they've recently closed this off completely. You can walk through it like you walk through the front door there today. So I'm kind of curious, the next time there's a leak on that water main, how we're going to get a big crew truck in there to fix the thing. We'll see. I'm sure they have a plan. Right, Larry? Oh, the water works on me. He always got a plan. So, between 1920 and 1926, they got this far. They got nine sections. So this, this is downtown. The blue that you see here would be representing the canal downtown where it's going. It's the west. That's the first section. The second and third section is at the turn where we talked about going up more. Fourth is behind Music Hall. Fifth, it says Fairmount, but it's really between four and five is where Brighton sits. So these arrows are taking you to where they had it all done. So they came out at what we now call the Western Hills Viaduct, which if the problem news was built in 1932, so it wasn't there in 1926. But that spot where it is, where those portals come out, that's where they daylighted and it would stay above ground the rest of the way with two very short exceptions. Literally, like from here to that wall that went underground two more times, but it was just because there was a hill in the way. And they get up here to with the terrace, and they come over to Bond Hill, and they, they, they build a couple of, uh, uh, overpasses in Norwood. They start to go to Oakley. And then, they run out of money. <laughs> because $6 million ain't going to cut it. There were two above, above ground stations. Two. No matter what the internet tells you, there were two. One was at Ludlow Avenue. So you can see it. And there are people in this room that saw these. Yes? Don't you have if you ever saw it? Yeah. Because they got obliterated when I-75 went. So I-75 goes right through. So just imagine where those portals are. That Let's go back one. So let's imagine where those portals are right here. You see, it's following the same north northern path. I'm not that bad, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> so Tony, did you call them again? So you see the north-south that we're going. So you just came out of those portals. So it's just following along. <coughs> So therefore, anything that's on that same path, I-75 is going to get. So this is it. Look, they put a lot of work into it, above ground station. 
And then the next one was Eclipse and Avenue. Uh, yeah. Same exact thing. I-75 to I-75. So Clifton Avenue is underneath here. It's right here, you can see if you were close. And, and this is Clifton up here. And so it's coming down like this. That's I-75 now. Exact same spot. So we made our way to Norwood. And because of the railroad, we had to do a couple overpasses. There, the, in Norwood was a section of the tunnel. Again, it only went from here to here. And it's gone now, but I'll wait. 20 years ago, it was still there. was a ballpark up there in Norwood where they were in this ballpark up there. And, of course, the kids got in there all the time. But they finally just not filled the thing because kids like to cause trouble. <laughs> By 1926, the money's gone. And something else came along. Cars. Cars. Yep. Henry Ford, Danny told me today, Henry Ford came along. People wanted their own car. They wanted to find their own way around. They didn't want to take mass tramp. This is not there anymore. Right here is a school for creative and performing arts. Oh. So it's Central Parkway and Race. That church you see in the background? Yep. It is still there. It's called the transept. The bar. Although, I think, Joe, did they close recently? I think they're closed. Anyway, so it's still there. This is not, that was a Strobridge Bridge manufacturing company. So the largest circus poster printing company in the world. Is that building right there? Boy, he's got a lot of BS, don't he? <laughs> now, just so you know, it was always in the plan to cover it up and make a nice parkway that you see here. So that is Central Parkway from 1928, when they finally covered it all up. And in east, in the distance, is Mount Adams. Again, this is the YMCA building that's still there. This is the French Bower building that's still there. This building currently is AAA, if you ever want to go down there. So this is Elm Street. So here's, now we call it Central Parkway, but in 1920, it was Plum Street. Oh. So if you're on Plum Street, think about it. If you're on Plum Street, you keep walking, keep walking, and keep walking, well, up, you run into a turn. It's just, it's just Plum Street. <coughs> so this is, so this is what was Plum Street. L, race, vine, woman, name. There's some kind of little sing song thing to do with that. So that's what it looked like. They always were going to do that. 1928, when I came through. Hey, remember to come out? Same spot. Same spot. We'll go back one. There's what we have today. There's what we had before they started. See, everybody's going over the line. Okay. Let's go inside. Again, we've seen quite a few hands that said they've been inside. Uh, my most recent visit was in 2020, when it was 100 years old. I'm pretty sure not much has changed. I turned in my key, by the way, so if anything happens down there, I didn't do it. <laughs> I, gave him, I gave him to Joe Dooley. <laughs> so this is the entrance. This is how you would get down in there. This is Central Parkway and Race. This is the AAA building. Yep. This is where we still go in most of the time if we don't have a truck. This is not there anymore. But that is the same spot as this. School for the Creative and Performing Arts. Right here. So there are two entrances. There were three, there were three um, stations. Race Street, Liberty, where the Warner Brothers building is now, and Bright. Race was the biggest and the nicest. Uh, they never got they never got fancy because they shut the project down and just stopped. 
So, but there was always an entrance on both sides so that you could come in over there where those big flower pots are, or you come in here where these flower pots are. Because underneath this little thing here is a series of locks. And if you are key personnel, <laughs> you can get in there. You unlock it, you let the doors, and the doors are like those cellar doors like the Wizard of Oz. Any M, any M, you know, when the, when, the, when the tornado comes, the hurricane, whatever. So they open up, and that's the first thing you see. It's a long staircase. And this is the, the Race Street Station. I always laughed at this yellow tape that's yeah. down there because if somebody gets that close and they fall in, they're on their own. <laughs> There's the stairs. We just came through that door right there. Cool. And we came down the steps. Like they look like new. Thank you. They look like new. Obviously, in the last hundred years, we've added that railing. There was yeah. one oh, the railing there. Those are the steps. <laughs> that the people who were going to ride were going to come down. There's one on both sides of the race street. Beautiful sunlit. Same steps. There's a boarding uh, rail here and one on the other side. All of this is still there. It still looks like this. Holding up Central Parkway. You can see boarding on both sides. This, it looks like there's a wall there that stops it, and indeed it does. That thing in the middle was installed because we did have here in Cincinnati interurbans. They would come from Hamilton. They would come from Jail Coffee, Columbus. Interurban, so between cities. And that said they thought that we'd have the interurban in there too. Well, in the urbans, and my man Satoli would tell us all about the different gauges of rails, they don't all ride on the same rail because it's different widths. So they had to have their own. So that's what that thing is in the middle. Would that, were, that would accommodate them? That would, yeah. That would? Mm -hmm. That's why they built it. Hey, yes, sir. What power did the trains hold? They didn't get that far. <laughs> <laughs> They didn't get that far. Yeah. It wasn't going to be gas. Yeah. Right. The question was, what fueled the cars? Since they never bought any cars, they didn't get that far ahead. It certainly wasn't going to be any kind of liquid fuel, that's for sure. But there's no electric down there. So they didn't get that far. <coughs> More shots, we're, we're still at Race Street. We're still walking around on Race Street. Look at that beautiful ceiling. There's a nice color picture. Oh, what's this thing over here? That's a water main. You might say, that looks plastic. Yeah, it's just some plastic tarpaulin we throw over top of it. The water main that's in there, I said earlier, is mostly concrete. I know you, if you're not in the business, you find it hard to believe that water mains are made of concrete, but they are. What size main? 48 inch. <laughs> when was it installed? When was it installed, Tim S., Larry Monster? Uh, uh, I should know that. I don't 50s? know. 50s? Uh, yeah, 50s. In the 50s. 50s yeah. Yeah. And the reason it's in there, we didn't have to dig a big old hole and put one in. We already had the hole. Come on. What's that? No. Now, there have been many, many, those of you who read the paper when there was a paper, or probably the internet now, there have been many, many, many uh, ideas of what to put down in there. There's no way in or out. There's three ways in and out over two, two miles. So safety-wise, you can't put anything down there. It's only about 50 feet across. What are you going to put in there? There's no sewage. There's no water. There's no electricity. 
There's a drain. There is no drain. But there's no water either. <laughs> never fills up with water. Never, never's a long time. So I have been in there because, as we talked about before, this is beautiful. It's all in good, great shape. There are points where it crumbles. And there are windows built into here about every, I don't know, thousand feet. There's a little window way up on this, way up. There's a window. That's one of the places that the, that the taggers, that the, the guys with the paint jump in. And when they do that, they break the window. So yes, there are points where rain <coughs> comes in. I have been in there where I couldn't go too far because there's too much water. But it eventually dissipates. I'll go back down there a month later and we fill them off. But they didn't put in drains because there wasn't going to be anything down there. What is the total distance that exists now? 2.2 miles. It goes from Lawrence Street all the way up to those portals where it exits at the Western Hills Viaduct. You see this down here? We're going to look at another picture of it. They put this in because they had this wonderful idea that they were going to go underneath the tracks and come up inside some of the buildings on Central Parkway. Huh. <laughs> Didn't happen. Yeah. But that's what that is. And there's the steps to take you down. And here's your first look at all the graffiti that's there. And yeah, I had to take out a whole bunch of things that we really shouldn't show in, in, in public. So that steps go down, steps go down. More steps going down. Great <laughs> It'd be easy to work on it, wouldn't it? Um, civil defense. So this station and the Liberty Street station were full of these things. Civil defense, water buckets, full of them. This is a Coke can. That's a Coke can. Dude, I ain't supposed to put in there. There's Coke in there, Joe. <laughs> Here's our water main. The gray part is, is it's constructed of concrete, but plastic. It's just another protect, protective uh, piece on it. Um, it is so dark in there, and I'll tell that story. It's so dark in there, that's what these little specks are. I would take my coworkers down here. I was able to convince uh, my supervision that we could use this as a training uh, class. Really, I just wanted to show people the, the subway. <laughs> but, but I told my bosses, we can turn this into training because there's water main down here. We can talk about the difference between concrete water main and ductile iron. And this will be great. And they were convinced. <laughs> but it is dark. <laughs> you have to have a high power. Uh, uh, your, your, your light on your phone, no can do. So you got to have a high, a high power. So what I would do is I'd take them down there. And then we go to the darkest spot. It's nowhere near the entry door. And I'd count to three and say, turn your light off. You can't see your hand. It's never been anywhere dark. And I had guys that would turn that light right back on. <laughs> What's that? You talked about the specks on the last picture. What were the specks? So that's just dust flying in the air. Wow. And so the camera at that time, I don't know how many times it was down here. It's down here for <laughs> three or ten years. And so that was one of my first digital cameras. And it doesn't focus at all in the dark. And you hold the button down and it thinks about it and thinks, that's like a government thing. It thinks about it and thinks about it. And, and then it finally takes the picture. Well, the flash. Mm -hmm. It illuminates what's ever right in front of it. Yeah. And it's the dust floating in the air. So yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't fuck with that. So that is dust floating in the air. And a cheap digital camera caught the dust. But not the little entry in the back. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Pete, you're so funny. So what you see here are these wooden... I'm going to call them rails, but they're not rails. Steel rails were never installed. They were going to put the steel rails on these, but they still had a very good use because 
That's how they, the equipment that they use, because you saw in earlier pictures where they're moving along. They put their equipment on those timbers, and, and they have wheels and they push. We've got lots of pictures of those uh, uh, mules where they're just pushing them along. And so they would ride along there. That is some really thick wood. And what you see on top of it? Dust. It's just dust. Again, there's our water main. You can see the water main is elevated. So it's 48 inches. Pete, how tall is that? Four feet. Oh boy. <laughs> He's a retired firefighter. <laughs> so it's four feet. So if you want to go on the other side of that water main, You'd have to decide, am I crawling underneath it? Or am I climbing over the top? Yep. Neither of them are good. Yeah. <laughs> so that's just another picture of the water main. Here we are in a tunnel, just walking through the tunnel. How long was each section of the water main? Because you had to get it down the steps and... Inside. Oh, no, they take it through that, those portals and put it on the back of the truck and drive the truck in. Okay. But I forget now, how long is a stick of pipe? 16 feet? No. 20. 20. 20. So 20 feet. 20 feet. Let's see. Maybe you can see. You can. See this black line here? Yeah. Oh, that's a C. That's where they stick them together. Maybe <coughs> he puts them together with one kind of sealer. Duck the wire uses a different kind of sealer. So that's what that is. So that's two sections being bolted together. When I first went to work there, and I remember years ago, <laughs> I said, oh, that's not going to work. And they laughed. Because here it is, 70 years later, it's still working. Is it designed to have a water main down there? Oh, no, no, no. It's designed to have, designed to have trains of people, yeah. We just, the city just took advantage of it. It was all. Imagine that. Well, the city owned it. It's still inspected by the city once a year. Um, but so here's a little door, those little windows we saw looking at, and you can jump back and forth between them. But it is a long, dark walk. <coughs> Temperature's about, I don't know, 50. You wear a light jacket, you're fine any time of year. Doesn't get any hotter, doesn't get any colder. See that ceiling? Still looking good. I'm looking at that graffiti. Here we are, we're getting close to the turn, starting to make the bend. Now we're at the bend. So see how it's disappearing? And here's the separator, there's, it's coming this way, and here's the bend. I said before, you could crawl underneath that pipe, or you could crawl over that pipe. I tried both and failed every time. <laughs> um, so they used to give tours, they mean the Systemic Museum Center, used to give tours. And so they didn't want to crawl underneath that pipe, and they didn't want to climb over that pipe either. So they were so kind. They installed a staircase that takes you up, across, and down. That is at the turn. So when you come, when you come down behind Music Hall, and you're going to turn left to go east towards Mount Adams, if you were to go, that's where this is, because they were going to have one go straight, and one go east. So that's where this, that's why there's a curve in it. Two different, on two different places. There's a better look at it. Again, the only time I took that picture is when I had that cheap camera. So it's not great. But you see, you see the two, the two tubes. It is not Terry, it's just really, really dark. So that's Ray Street. You go up a mile. And here's Liberty, Central Parkway and Liberty, right in front of the Warner Brothers pictures building. I think you're all familiar with that. There's another Bilco door, same thing. And you you put your key in the lock and you open it up and you walk down some more steps. In this case, you wind up walking down the hall. You go down the hall before you get to the platforms. There it is, two tubes, a platform. Jump down, take a picture. There's some water there. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's a window up here. Now, in the Cold War, 
they decided let's have a fallout shelter. So the city, this would be the command center. So they did install, this is at Liberty Street Station. So you see there's electricity that is disconnected. They installed it. This was like a command center. It had phones in it and no laptops. <laughs> you can see some of our friends get in there and do their artwork. You can sleep there. These are still down. The smoke shack. Don't look so close. <laughs> right here. So those, those dead frames are still down. These are a bunch of bottles of iodine. I guess to clean the water. I don't know. Now, so there's not a lot to see it. There's not a whole bunch to see at Liberty. There's hardly anything to see at Brighton. But here we are at Brighton. There's that same building. That same brewery building that was in those former pictures. Yeah. That's the same shop from 1930. Go back one. It's the same spot from 1930. All right. And the Greater Cincinnati Waterworks has installed this wonderful plate, so nobody can get in there now. When I went in there, and I was in there a couple of times, it's there are steps, yes, but when they poured, and when they poured that, they poured it right on top of the steps. So <clears throat> people who like food would have trouble getting between the, the sidewalk to the steps. That'd be me. So, but they got a, a steel plate over top of it, so you really can't get in. Again, you go down the hallway, and you got two platforms. <coughs> There's our water main again. How long is the water main? 2.2 miles. <laughs> <laughs> From start to finish, I'll be in there. Oh, God, where'd that come? <laughs> well, that's why there's no rats down there. It's kind of like my dad. My dad said, "Yeah, I got no picture. You got down in the basement, scared the rats away." Thanks, Dad. So now we're leaving. Now we're headed towards the portal, and you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, and then they brick it. Light, please. that you saw are actually from the other end at Walnut Street. It's all great. Right okay. Questions? Keep them short. Huh? Yes. On, on the map you said it looked like an opening. Was right. that just like a... Did they put, what, what did they have once they left the top? All they did was bought, they bought property and said we're going to put it here. There's what, they didn't install anything. Yeah, they only installed the the above ground that you saw, right away, so they bought the property. You saw that overpass in Norwood. I told you about a tunnel in Norwood. But they didn't install concrete fixtures anywhere else. They would just hit right away and, and you know, cleared it out. It's ready. That's right. People say there is. Jeff, Charlie, thanks. Couldn't see it. They they never installed the Marshall Street above ground station. Never installed it or underground. A lot of people say they did. Thank you. Yeah, it was never a station. So it, the, the question is that uh, the safety lane. Everybody remembers the safety lane. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. The garage is next is attached to the safety lane. Yep. So that's right where it went through. And he's saying that, that he saw lots of concrete in the basement, and he used the term rapid transit system. That really is the official name of our subway, the rapid transit system. So that's why I've never seen that sign. There was never a sign. It was like the old time. Oh, okay, they told it. Right? Yeah. Right. There was never a station in Marshall. There's a lot of people who say there was. I can show you a picture of 
I'll take it. I'll take it. You bring that next month. I can't wait to see it. Yes, sir. There's a plan to go to Fairfax. Fairfax? Because there's some streets over there. Just that way. So these are 20 feet deep. So you, when you saw the hole get dug and then you saw some concrete on top, it's 20 feet from the top to the bottom. Those loggers, those are 100 feet, some of them, depending on where you are. Are you up on the hill like the Jackson Brewery where you're up near Clifton underneath the incline? Those aren't 100, but the ones downtown, they're 100 feet deep. With a shovel, with Germans, one shovel at a time. Yes, ma'am. You were, you were looking on the internet. That's how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> the, the comment was there were cars that were purchased, but they purchased them, they were wrong size, and they didn't fit the top. No. Cars were never purchased. They spec them out because people sell cars, sell subway cars, train cars, they sell them. So they said, here's what we're, we, we're interested in buying. And of course, everybody that sold cars said, hey, I'll bid on that. They never bought a single vehicle. Oh. Mm -hmm. Never. <laughs> never. <laughs> well, people want to drive their own car. It's only two miles. Yeah. It's only two miles. Right, Phyllis? Okay. Yes. It's yeah. about a more of the price home store side. Yeah. What was the air quality? <laughs> when I was down? Huh? No problem at all. Yep. Was great. Was great. Again, about 50 degrees. And uh, very dark. Very, very, very dark. No breathing problem. I didn't have any breathing problem. I got a nap because I'm old. This whole place at that time of depression, does it change the depression? They had bond. The question is this happened around the depression, so. Is the depression part of the reason they stopped? They had bonds for six million dollars. In six years, they spent it all. That's why it stopped. Because they and oh by the way, those bonds didn't get paid off until 1964. <laughs> 64. So they ran out of money, and everybody wanted their own car. Put those two together. We're gonna stop. Mike, you got a question? I just, so, so. Oh, oh the wrong mic, darn it. Oh. <laughs> I was trying to ignore you. Go ahead. So when, when they ran out, of, obviously when they ran out of money and they said, we don't have any more money, but no one pushed to try to say, let's try to get some more. They, they completely said, that's it, we're not continuing. That, that, was, that was the drop dead issue. Right, because everybody had a car by I, then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And they said, and nobody, and they're they about to get ready to shut down and fill in to talk to this better than me. About to get ready to shut down the streetcars and the inner urbans. Oh, so the other thing okay. they were going to use them for okay. were going to be gone shortly. Okay. Everybody wanted their car. Okay. Thanks, Henry Ford. Right? right <laughs> yes, ma'am. I think they kept their beer in those cars that they bought that didn't fit <laughs> in the <laughs> Hey, the internet's a wonderful thing. Yeah, Don't yeah. get me wrong. I'm on the internet every day doing research on this kind of stuff. The internet's a wonderful thing. But it's also human beings entering that data. Keep that in mind. Yeah, so so the so what is what do they call it? It's not it's called the connector now. You know what yeah. it's called? Yeah. yeah. People write it because it's free. That's why they're using it. If they had to pay for it, they didn't write it. That's why they're using it. Yeah. Ray, I've got two questions. Uh oh. Why are you talking so long? <laughs> Did the thirty seven flood have any impact on the subway tunnel? Did the river get into it? Well, regardless of what Pete thinks, 
I wasn't there to see. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. I've never had anybody ask that question before. Now, so you are at Central Parkway. I'm guessing. You are 11 blocks from the river. I don't think it got that high. But of course, it's underground. I don't know. That's a good research. I'll check the internet. <laughs>